concessions on behalf of the United Kingdom, but on behalf of their own fundamental objective, which if they can't persuade the Scots to vote for independence in the referendum, try and do it by salami slicing, weaken the United Kingdom. That is the risk for a Prime Minister, for any party leader, not to make that point clear during a general election campaign, would be failing his prime duty of warning the public in England and in Scotland that the very existence of the United Kingdom was not finally resolved in the referendum a few months ago. It will be significantly influenced if the nationalists uh, win very large numbers of seats in Scotland and use that position to extract concessions they wouldn't otherwise have a chance of getting uh, from a, a weakened Mr Miliband. But aren't you, in effect, aiding and abetting the nationalist strategy by talking up their prospects, by praising Nicola Sturgeon, thereby increasing the prospect that they will do well? We're not talking up their prospects. You, you've got to be realistic about this. We've had a whole swathe of opinion polls, perhaps a dozen now, showing that the nationalists could easily win 30 or 40 Labour seats. Even the Labour Party have acknowledged uh, that there is a tsunami facing them. So this isn't talking up the SNP. It is saying, look, this might happen. Not it will happen. It might happen. If it does happen, then it will not only destroy the Labour Party in Scotland, but we would be in the absurd situation that the Labour Party, having been destroyed in their, what used to be their strongest part of the United Kingdom, still would claim to be entitled to form a government, but we could only do so with the support of nationalists who would impose upon the Labour government concessions for that support that would not be in the interests of the United Kingdom as a whole and would be against the basic wishes of people in Scotland who voted against independence. But do you disregard the warnings from the likes of David Steele, Alistair Darling, Malcolm Bruce, people who have a lot of experience of Scottish politics who are saying in terms, be careful here because you risk fueling the nationalist no, surge. Hold on, it depends what we're talking about here. The people you've referred to indeed are right to say be cautious. The language we use must not be emotional language, it must not be ridiculous claims or threats or fears. But to make the fundamental point, I don't think which is seriously in dispute, that if the Labour Party lose 30 or 40 seats to the nationalists, how can they hope to form a government unless they buy nationalist support by making concessions to them? That's not alarmist. You know, that's just plain basic arithmetic, uh, which cannot be gainsaid. But then what is wrong with that? We are in a union. Yep. If the SNP do well, then they are perfectly entitled to have a position of influence in Westminster. I don't question that they are entitled to claim. The question is whether it's in the interests of the United Kingdom as a whole uh, to allow them to be in that situation. Now, if they get into that situation and they make claims, what is Mr. Miliband going to do? Is he going to concede all the things they demand for their support? Or is he going to acknowledge that he cannot form a government? Now that is a real issue, not to talk about it during a general election campaign, we'd all be guilty of dereliction of duty not to raise that as one of the big issues of this campaign. So Malcolm Rickard, thanks uh, very much for your time. Joanna, one thing is uh, pretty clear, Mr Cameron is determined to keep pressing with this line of attack, believing that it is actually resonating with voters outside of Scotland. Thanks very much, Norman. Well, um, well, let's hear actually right now what uh, Ed Miliband thinks about this because he's talking about it. And, and I just have to say to you, uh, and I have to say to Conservatives, frankly, I, I think they should tell the Prime Minister to stop because he's demeaning his office, he's demeaning himself, he's demeaning those people actually he sends out on his behalf, and frankly, I think it's threatening to the integrity of the United Kingdom. And I think there are right-thinking Conservatives right across the country who feel deeply queasy about what he's doing. And I think it says something about his campaign. Because his has become a campaign where he will say anything and he will stop at nothing. And I don't think that's what people want in a Prime Minister.